Welcome to Longevity Industries' presentation of the Destiny of Manufacturing podcast. We are here today at Tennessee Tech, and I am fortunate enough to have with me Tyler Edwards, who is a master's candidate. Welcome, Tyler. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you here. And right off the bat, what are some of the things that got you excited and that you see five years from now, what are the things that you see that are changing in technology that are going to be impactful? Well, um, as, as you know, the whole additive manufacturing thing, I mean, it's been around for, I think, 40 years at this point. Um, and it just it keeps almost coming into the mainstream manufacturing. Um, but there's still... So far, there's been issues, but I, I see with some of the things that some of my uh, co-researchers uh, here at Tennessee Tech doing like composite fiber reinforced um, or multi-material um, FDM 3D printing, that, that sort of thing can, can improve um, the current additive manufacturing abilities or capabilities. And I could see that improving um, to the point of being a viable mainstream manufacturing technology. Great. What, what got you involved in, uh, in engineering? Well, um, I've always had a, a strong desire to, to be in some, something within STEM. Um, and I saw that engineering had a little bit of math, but not too much math. So, so that was always a, a, a preferred route. Uh, but I actually had a, a cousin that went to Vanderbilt and he's actually in the Navy and, and he was mechanical engineering. So I was like, well, you know what, that's, that sounds like that could be fun. So I jumped into mechanical engineering and haven't looked back. Good, good. Now, would you say that he was your greatest influence? Oh, uh, well, one of my influences, uh, my greatest influence is probably, um, my mom and dad, uh, as far as my dad, he's, he was in psychology. Um, so he, he sort of, he had a strong worth at work ethic and he sort of helped inspire me to, to look at, I guess, school as, as a more, uh, viable option beyond just getting a, a bachelor's. Um, and then also my mom, she's in education. And so she's always been into math and science and all these things. And, from a young age, she was always giving me some of these uh, uh, computer games that were math based and all that sort of thing. So I, I always was basically being pushed toward a, a STEM, especially engineering field. Um, also Legos. I mean, everybody has Legos as a kid. So that's what that was the my, my the favorite part of my childhood. Great. <laughs> that's a good story. I like that. Uh so, so tell me, what is the favorite part of the technology that you've learned so far? What, what is it in engineering that has been your most, is something that you feel was probably something that you could relate to closely? Well, my uh, undergrad, uh, my, my bachelor's concentration in me mechanical engineering was mechatronics. So I, I took five or six classes with a bunch of electrical engineering and computer engineering students. And seeing the the way that the the computer systems work with mechanical systems uh, really, I guess, lit a fire under me to, to to go more heavily in that direction. And so now that I'm doing more additive manufacturing, um, it it's still the same thing. It, it whether it's a CNC router, or additive manufacturing, 3D printer machine or even uh, wire arc added manufacturing welding robots, uh, all those mechanical electrical systems, is, it's intriguing. And, and so I'm, I'm very happy to be doing that uh, to this point. Good, good. Do you, now, now, would you say that uh, that would take you in the direction of your dream job? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say that uh, doing something that involves um, a lot of different things, um, whether it's something with, with the 
PLC control systems, uh, robotics, additive manufacturing, or even some sort of advanced, other advanced manufacturing techniques. Um, that that's always in my mind to try to to not narrow myself down too much. Um, that's why sort of startups and maybe even entrepreneurship are more interesting to me as a future uh, career as opposed to large corporations. Because um, I've done some co-ops at large automotive uh, manufacturers and it's fun. It's, it's an interesting environment, but it's also, it takes a while for them to get into more of the advanced manufacturing. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and in general, when you look at advanced manufacturing, since they hard tool a lot of things and everything is already kind of fine tuned, you really wouldn't replace a technology like that to go into additive unless it's going to add value. Yeah. And I think a lot of times those companies don't see an added value unless the process can speed it up or do something that some of the other areas couldn't, which is probably more likely that it's making parts that currently were not able to be made, or you could combine 10 parts into one. But yeah, I think those are some of the opportunities there. Now, what is it you're most proud of as, as an engineering student? What, what are you most proud of? Ooh. Um, I mean, I, I had an opportunity, um, well, I guess two opportunities. Um, I had one co-op with a, a local uh, manufacturer, uh, but then I went to Pennsylvania to work with um, a Harley Davidson in, in York, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. did a co-op there. And then just a few weeks after that, over the summer, I did a research internship in Germany and just uh, seeing, because at that point I, I had just done the long co-op locally and then some classes and just seeing that these companies and positions actually wanted me to come based on my uh, education and background so far. It was, I was sort of uh, surprised by it. And, and since then it's just been, um, I, I feel proud about having the fact that being in engineering, there's always opportunities. Um, and, and I'm, I guess I'm, I'm improving my marketability. Good. I think that's important to understand where, where you, where your strengths are. That that's really understanding your strengths and your weaknesses is incredibly important to your uh, viability as a, as an employee to a company or right. it, at, even as an entrepreneur. Now, have you thought about that of being an entrepreneur versus being part of a team? Do you have a preference? Uh, right, right now, I'm sort of thinking more along the lines of um, when I'm finished with this master's, trying to get in with maybe startups um, mm -hmm. or maybe even smaller companies that have been around a while. Uh, but long term, I, I think I would like to uh, get into more of an entrepreneurship type of position as opposed to just a, I guess, a, with a smaller startup company, sometimes it's more like a family environment. Uh, but I'd, I've had a, a, a photography uh, business in the past. And, and so it was intriguing getting to, to basically be the one in charge. Um, and so that that's something that uh, I would be interested in. But at the, at the moment, I'm still thinking when I graduate, I'll, I'll lean more toward other companies or startups. Are, are you more excited or terrified about the potential of artificial intelligence? Well, I'm honestly, I'm pretty excited about it um, because I've actually for one semester in undergrad, I did um, sort of a type of research project with under uh, an electrical engineering professor with a master's student, we were developing a quadcopter drone um, using the Arduino microcontroller and MATLAB and all that stuff. Uh, and we were trying to 
make this drone autonomous. And just the intrigue of that was, um, I mean, it, it was really exciting. And then now you, you see companies like Boston Dynamics and, and all these other companies, they're, they're developing the technology as long as it's not, I mean, I, I guess it's sort of like a government. Uh, you don't want it to have so much control that it, it, it's restrictive um, where you don't really have options uh, as a manufacturer to, to change up your what the system tells you to do. Um, but as a whole, it can improve efficient, efficiency and, and all these types of things that we're sort of needing in a, a modern or even future uh, society. Great. Tyler, it's been great to have you here today. We've had Tyler Edwards on here from Tennessee Tech. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Thanks for having me. It was pleasant talking to you.